Hi, I've made a uh, video previously about the need to keep race out of men's rights issues and because of a surplus and an abundance of comments uh, on various videos I've made pretty much uh, involving religion and politics composed of those issues essentially comments exclusively addressing that those issues I want to add my two cents here and just say why I think in addition to race um, both religion and politics should be kept out of uh, men's issues, men's rights, and men going their own way. The former, uh, i.e. religion being much easier to cover, explain why it needs to be kept out, and uh, the latter, well, it's tricky, it's a lot trickier to keep politics out of uh, these issues because unfortunately uh, a lot of stuff is just laden and, and imbued with politics, but I'll do my best. Um, uh, now, the reason why I want to even talk about religion, you'd think it's odd, but I've, I've been getting a lot of comments, most of them pretty uh, benign, mind you, about the need to return to religion X or religion Y or religion Z as a solution or a particular uh, piece of literature, as a piece of literature X, Y, Z. Um, some are really extreme. In fact, I had uh, one commenter extract my particular positions on religion out of me, and here's, I think, what the result was. Quote, I find it humorous that all these intellectual people, Paul Elam et al. et al., cannot figure out uh, what is going on is a test of God. What it means is that our that you that your you uh, y o u r are all heathens and deserve your fate. You girl rights watch. All of you are just stereotypes. Here's a little advice: shave your body, put on some nylons, high heels, lipstick, nice short skirt, and go out and suck some dick, and do that for five years. Then t h a n. Tell me what you think. Bye bye, loser. Well. The comment is essentially devoid of any content. It's uh, more, it's a kind of shaming. And uh, it, unfortunately, this is what happens when you, uh, in my opinion, you mix, uh, well, as it, yes, I, I full, full disclosure is, is uh, required. I am a heathen. I am an atheist. Ooh, um, I don't run around wearing my atheism on my sleeve. In fact, it's not something I think about terribly much because uh, I thought about it for a while. I made a decision and I moved on with my life. Um, the fact that Paul Elam uh, and likely Girl Rice Water are also atheists, uh, so what? I fail to see what our heathenism has to do with men's rights issues or with the issues we talk about. And even if we were to enter into a theological debate on things like of this nature, um, men's rights is, uh, at the end of the day, an earthly affair. Um, so I fail to see where theology has any, played any role in this whatsoever. Um, it, it simply is not relevant. I mean, I, 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 this is just a bunch of insults. Um, I, I, don't, I also don't think, um, without naming very specifics, that returning to a certain kind of religion, and several have been offered, I've seen, uh, in the comments, is a solution uh, to the way things are. Um, in fact, often um, my impression is that the idea of, it, I made a video about this, the returning to the past um, coincides, dovetails well, well with returning to said religion. Uh, because that uh, that, that didn't work, as I said in the past. I, I fail to see how return to specific religious doctrines would be an alternative, generally speaking, because they these these institutions went hand in hand. But most importantly, and I, I don't want to talk about, I really don't really don't want to talk about religion too much. Uh, that you know, my 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 ontological positions on God or gods or whatever deific power you want to call it, they're not relevant. And I, and I would assume that Paul Elam's positions aren't relevant either to men's rights, and I would assume that girls' rights, girl rights, what's issues are irrelevant as well, regarding uh, deities and the like. It, 
So I don't know. But basically, this this one particular uh, commenter viewer, uh, well, I mean, looks like fem feminist shaming tactics to me. So um, anyway, so religion totally irrelevant to men's rights. I just should be a, a no brainer. But anyway, moving on to the much more complicated issue of politics. Hmm. Um, well, the reason why I want to talk about this is, well, it's fairly obvious, like I said, it's uh, men's rights, uh, men's activism, potentially, it can, it's just, just a lead and a huge chocolate block full of, of, of politics. Um, feminism is inevitably a, an, an evolution of, well, left-wing politics, essentially, of statism. Um, but <clears throat> there's some things in specific, specifically I'd like to address. <clears throat> Pardon me, it's a bit early here. Uh, well, look, I, I've had uh, I had a user here uh, openly advocate fascism as a solution to uh, the problem of feminism. He in fact sent me a, a link, uh, where uh, a video link about the, how fascism is natural to man to state of affairs. Well, uh, obviously, I'm not going to go down the route of fascism. Specifically, what I'd like to address is, um, yes, a lot of feminism, a lot of uh, bad stuff comes from the so-called left. Um, state coercion, uh, coercive force, using the government to enforce edicts and desires upon others, whether these people uh, desire to have that enforced upon them or not. Um, and often it's posed that the idea that I suppose that the solution to that is uh, the right. I think um, at, at the get-go, I'd like uh, from the get-go, I'd like to just make clear that uh, first off, I, my political position, I, I am a, a strong libertarian with a lowercase l. I don't associate with any parties, but my political, uh, philosophical, political beliefs would fall in line with libertarianism. I can't really think of a single issue where it, where it wouldn't sort of just nicely fit into that mesh, as it were. But every time abstract political systems or systems of thought become institutionalized, there is inevitably corruption. There is corruption of those systems. Um, now, what I specifically want to address is the right, the idea of conservatism. Well, the problem I see here is we have capital C conservatism or right wing politics and lowercase r. Lowercase r might be, I don't think it's that it's it's identical to libertarianism, but certainly there there seems to be much more in common low in lowercase c and, and uh, conservatism in lowercase uh, right wing politics or political philosophy than there would be say uh, in the actual uppercase. The uppercase stuff, even the uppercase liber L libertarianism uh, party, it's impossible when you institutionalize philosophical principles to avoid uh, some level of corruption and mutation. So uh, there, are some people think that you have to, if you, you know, feminism is the left, and for the most part, it is. But the right, I don't really see the right being the solution. Capital R. Capital R right conservatism. I mean, uh, most of them are um, in in bed with lobbyists. So I'm talking specifically about the United States, in bed with lobbyists, doing uh, you know double dealing, doing doing all the stuff that so-called left wing Democrats, capital L, capital D, um, are doing, and um, many are uh, conservatives in, in name only. More to the point, one issue that is very important to me, because I've had friends who, people in my family affected by it, is the issue of war. Um, that conservatives, uh, even with the lowercase, they seem to be strong advocates of war. Um, they seem to want the United States to be involved in 10,000 conflicts. They see no problem with it. They see, they don't even see a financial problem with it. They think Cut everywhere, but let's not cut military spending. That's the pragmatic issue. The other issue, of course, is the issue of the war. It had the wars that we've been uh, fighting been, 
been just or justifiable. I'd like to, I think I'd argue that Vietnam wasn't just, Iraq wasn't just um, to no one, in particular to the men we send off from our own country to die. And as I, I'll have to reiterate this, um, what, I, what I hate is blind patriotism. I really do hate blind patriotism. The, the, the country that sends them off to die doesn't care about them. Um, does anyone know how Vietnam vets were treated when they returned? Like scum, like shit on, on the earth. Um, post-traumatic post -traumatic, post -traumatic, traumatic stress disorder, all of these things, they're not adequately addressed by the so-called state that loves our soldiers. And there's also a tendency uh, to call you know, Vietnam, I think Robert McNamara at some point in time said, yeah, Vietnam was a mistake. And people say Iraq, Iraq was a mistake. Well, I guess that's a nice, nice euphemism, but uh, I don't think there were mistakes. I think there were horrors. Um, any war where you have thousands and thousands of people, men primarily, dying for the sake of um, the state uh, that doesn't care about them, that uses them, uses them as a means to an end, uh, that, that's pretty much a horror, in my opinion. That's not, enough, not a mistake. Um, of course, it is a horror riddled with mistakes. That, that can be said. But my primary issue here, uh, as I'm trying to link it up to men's rights, uh, not just my sort of libertarian opposition to unjust war, is uh, the fact that, yes, men are sent there to die, they get injured, they have mental health problems, and they're not taken care of appropriately and adequately. They're not, they're, what they're given is some modicum of uh, so-called respect and um, if, they're, if they die, they have an American flag draped over their coffin, um, more uh, jingoistic and false patriotism, as if their sacrifice actually meant something to the powers that be, actually meant something to either the Democrats or the Republicans. Um, the, I should make this clear. I, I don't think it's the patriotic duty of a, of a man to fight his country. That was the case in the 19th century. Um, and remember, uh, when in the British during the British Empire, when men didn't want to fight for the sake of the so-called empire, they were shamed. They were given a white feather, um, and women, of course, participated in the shaming as well. Um, this man was an outcast. No, it was his duty to go off and need be to die for the glory of the empire. He was a small cog in the giant wheel, part of the greater collective. Yada, 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 rather disgusting, in my opinion. Um, the, there really haven't been, of late, in the last few uh, decades, any wars that have been particularly justifiable. And the fact is, most conservatives, uh, capital C, I imagine, um, are in bed with various complexes, uh, military-industrial mm -hmm. complex, Freedom, um, Lockheed Martin, so on and so forth. Uh, doesn't add up. You cannot you cannot be a men's rights advocate and then still think it's, it's just and appropriate to send men off to die. More importantly, um, since I'm not obsessed with my own nationality, um, since I didn't choose to be born where I was, and while I'm happy that I was born where I was because it afforded me various opportunities, I bear no ill will towards other nationalities. So the many Iraqi men who have died that we've basically sent our men to kill and then to be killed. Uh, I don't know. W what's the point? Um, but this is what, what the state is always, or powers that be have always th uh, thrived on, sending one, one man to, to kill another and vice versa. Um, it's the, key, the way that keeps uh, us in check, men in check. Uh, and I've seen in, in friends and family members the, the horrors of war. The I've not participated in any war, but the, the effects and it messes you up, and uh, there's no glory in it, and there's no, uh, it's not a, an act of patriotism to fight for your country, unless, uh, unless it's justifiable, perhaps, but even then, it's, it's, it's debatable. No, so I, I, I think that politics, as much as it's sort of infused in these issues, needs to be kept out, um, and people, it's a left-right issue. Well, I will ask conservatives, tell me, uh, if you are, in fact, if you are a conservative and you favor uh, wars of aggression against other men where many other men are killed and you favor sending your own uh, countrymen off to die for unjust causes, 
tell me what is conservative about that. Is this a left-right issue? I think not. Um, this is an, an issue of simply dehumanization of, of, of men. Cannon fodder, I've said it before, cheap labor, cannon fodder. Um, and unfortunately, uh, it's obvious that the left doesn't give a shit about men, but there's this notion, this illusion that the right does, and it clearly doesn't. Not in its overt politics, and I, I'm highly skeptical of its claims to care about men's issues, uh, even in, in the lowercase c area. Um, do, do right-wing men care about men's roles, or do people on the right care about men's roles as cannon fodder? Um, in fact, the few that seem um, to have care about these issues, uh, they, they're essentially advocate, advocating a return to the good old days, which I've addressed as well, which weren't that good. Uh, so I just don't think politics, um, at least the overt manifestation of politics uh, in, in, in men's rights issues is a good thing. Yes, feminists are invariably uh, people on the left. Um, uh, a lot of state coercion comes from the left, but what about the draft? I mean, no doubt, that, that I'm sure that a lot of conservatives would, would re-advocate uh, an introduction of the draft. And, uh, you know, this is a rather poor example, perhaps, but I have a Greek friend who's basically forced now to cut off a year of his life, a little bit more, to do military service, state coercion. So, unless, <clears throat> I think... I'm not going to tell people what they should think or do, but generally speaking, if, if, if men going their own way probably would be opposed to all state coercion, be it on a social or socioeconomic level, but also things like the draft and, and sending people off to wars that are then deemed mistakes. Um, I, just, I just don't see it, and I don't see it being very helpful. Um, politics is never going to be something uh, that that really properly represents what the abstract philosophy that's supposed to be behind it um, does in fact represent um, because these abstractions are just that, abstractions. When it's put into practice and in reality, it's something else entirely. Uh, so no, I, I it's not. It really isn't a right wing, a right left issue. Um, for, you know, the left has been talked about to death. But I mean, if people on the right really want to say that people on the right give a shit about men's rights issues, stop sending our men off to die and stop sending them to kill other men in countries that never did anything to them or us for that matter. Uh, once that happens, you can start talking about being a left right issue. Until then, um, politics should be kept out of it. Um, at best, uh, I think. Men's rights, generally speaking, goes well with small l libertarianism, but you know that's up to you. But until that stuff happens, it really is. It's not solely a right, left, right, right, left issue. There are there are some issues that are left and right regarding it, but um, the war issue, which is a pet peeve of mine, uh, is something that conservatives always fail on, with the except possible exception of Ron Paul, and he's a politician anyway, so I'm not that trust trustworthy of him. So. Um, Anyway, that's, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, thanks for listening.